Boston FBI. His name is spelt B-O-N-A-V-O-L-O-N-T-A. Third will be Christina O'Connell, Christina with a K. She's the special agent in charge of the Internal Revenue Services Criminal Investigations in Boston. Also joining them on the stage will be Assistant U.S. Attorney Eric Rosen. He will not be speaking, but he will be up here, and we'll take questions at the end. Okay? Is everybody ready? You guys ready at the back? Okay. Good morning. We're here today to announce charges in the largest college admissions scam ever prosecuted by the Department of Justice. We've charged 50 people nationwide with, with participating in a conspiracy that involved, first, cheating on college entrance exams, meaning the SAT and the ACT, and second, securing admission to elite colleges by bribing coaches at those schools to accept certain students under false pretenses. In return for bribes, these coaches agreed to pretend that certain applicants were recruited competitive athletes, when in fact the applicants were not. As the coaches knew, the students' athletic credentials had been fabricated. Overall, today we have charged three people who organized these scams, two SAT or ACT exam administrators, one exam proctor, one college administrator, nine coaches at elite schools, and 33 parents who paid enormous sums to guarantee their children's admission to certain schools through the use of bribes and fake academic and athletic credentials. A central defendant in the scheme, William Singer, will plead guilty today to charges of racketeering conspiracy, money laundering conspiracy, conspiracy to defraud the United States, and obstruction of justice. Singer allegedly ran a college counseling service and something called the Key Worldwide Foundation. Between roughly 2011 and 2018, wealthy parents paid Singer about $25 million in total to guarantee their children's admission to elite schools, including Yale, Georgetown, Stanford, the University of Southern California, the University of Texas, UCLA, and Wake Forest. Beyond enriching himself, Singer used that money to bribe college officials, Division I coaches, college exam administrators, all to secure admission for the children of his clients, not on their merits, but through fraud. Singer's foundation purported to be a charitable organization, but was actually a front Singer used to launder the money that parents paid him, of which he would then take a portion and dole it out as bribes to coaches and others. More specifically, with respect to the SAT and ACT scheme, numerous parents paid Singer between $15,000 and $75,000 to have someone either take the exam for their child or to correct their child's answers afterward, all to achieve a sufficiently high pre-agreed score on those tests. Singer accomplished this by paying defendant Mark Riddell, also charged today, to take or correct the exams and by bribing two exam administrators, defendants Nikki Williams and Igor Dvorsky, to allow this to happen on their watch. Nikki Williams student and Dvorsky about $10,000 per student. To facilitate the scam, Singer counseled parents to take their children to a therapist and get a letter saying that because of purported learning disabilities or other issues, the child needed additional time to complete the ACT or the SAT. Once the companies that administer those exams had agreed to the extra time, Singer arranged for the child to take the exam individually with one of the proctors he had bribed, or one of the administrators he had bribed, either at a location in Houston or a location in California. Beyond the SAT and ACT scam, parents also paid Singer money 
that he then used to bribe coaches and administrators to designate their children as recruited athletes for various schools. In return for bribes, coaches would use slots that their schools had allocated to them. Ed to take the applicants Singer had identified. Singer worked with the parents to fabricate impressive athletic profiles for their kids, including fake athletic credentials or honors or fake participation in elite club teams. In many instances, Singer helped parents take staged photographs of their children engaged in particular sports. Other times, Singer and his associates used stock photos that they pulled off the internet, sometimes photoshopping the face of the child onto the picture of the athlete and submitting it in support of the applications for these children to elite schools. In one example, the head women's soccer coach at Yale, in exchange for $400,000, accepted an applicant as a recruit for the Yale women's team, despite knowing that the applicant did not even play competitive soccer. The student was in fact admitted and afterward, the student's family paid Singer $1.2 million for that service. In addition to the standardized test scam and the college admissions scam, Singer also arranged for someone to take online high school classes in place of certain students so that those students could submit higher grades as part of their overall college application packages. The parents' payments to Singer for these services were made at least in part as charitable contributions to the sham charity that Singer had set up. At his direction, employees of the charity sent Singer's clients acknowledgement letters falsely confirming that no goods or services had been exchanged for the purported donation. This enabled the parents to not only mask the true nature of the payment, but also take the tax write-off at the end of the year. Today we have charged 33 parents nationwide with hiring Singer's Group to defraud testing companies and or various universities. These parents are a catalog of wealth and privilege. They include, for example, CEOs of private and public companies, successful securities and real estate investors, two well-known actresses, a famous fashion designer, and the co-chairman of a global law firm. Based on the charges unsealed today, all of them knowingly conspired with Singer and others to help their children either cheat on the SAT or ACT and or buy their children's admission to elite schools through fraud. Singer's clients paid him anywhere between $100,000 and $6.5 million for this service, though the majority paid between $250,000 and $400,000 per student. This case is about the widening corruption of elite college admissions through the steady application of wealth combined with fraud. There can be no separate college admission system for the wealthy, and I'll add that there will not be a separate criminal justice system either. Every year, hundreds of thousands of hardworking, talented students strive for admission to elite schools. As every parent knows, these students work harder and harder every year in a system that appears to grow more and more competitive every year. And that system is a zero-sum game. For every student admitted through fraud, an honest, genuinely talented student was rejected. The parents charged today, despite already being able to give their children every legitimate advantage in the college admissions game, instead chose to corrupt and illegally manipulate the system for their benefit. We're not talking about donating a building so that a school's more likely to take your son or daughter. We're talking about deception and fraud. Fake test scores, fake athletic credentials, fake photographs, bribed college officials. As you can see from the various charging documents unsealed today in this case, the investigation was complex and extremely labor intensive. Two defendants will plead guilty this afternoon. As I mentioned before, William Singer will plead guilty at 2.30 today in this courthouse. And John Vandemore, who is the head sailing coach at Stanford University, will also plead guilty today at 3 p.m. I want to thank the four prosecutors 
in my office who were assigned to this investigation for their extraordinary work on this case. The lead prosecutor on this matter, Eric Rosen, is up here with me today. I also want to thank the FBI and the IRS for their usual professionalism and skill in the investigation and takedown of this case. The takedown today involved over 200 federal agents nationwide who arrested 50 people in six states and on both coasts. With that, I'll hand things over to Joe Bonavolonta, who is the special agent in charge of the Boston office of the FBI. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Once again, my name is Joe Bonavolonta, and I'm the special agent in charge of the FBI Boston Division. Operation Varsity Blues culminated early this morning when approximately 300 special agents from the FBI and the IRS criminal investigations set out to arrest 46 individuals across the country for their roles in an international college admissions bribery and money laundering scam. So far, 38 individuals have been safely taken into custody and seven are working towards surrender. One is being actively pursued. Another four are expected to plead guilty here in Boston, two later today, and two in the coming weeks. We believe all of them, parents, coaches, and facilitators, lied, cheated, and covered up their crimes at the expense of hardworking students and taxpayers everywhere. Our investigation began last May after we uncovered evidence of a large-scale elaborate fraud while working in unrelated undercover operation. Following 10 months of intense investigative efforts using a variety of sophisticated techniques, the FBI uncovered what we believe is a rigged system, robbing students all over the country of their right at a fair shot to getting into some of the most elite universities in this country, such as Yale, Stanford, and Georgetown. We believe everyone charged here today had a role in fostering a culture of corruption and greed that created an uneven playing field for students trying to get into these schools the right way through hard work, good grades, and community service. Unfortunately, what many students didn't know was that the odds had already been stacked against them by corrupt practices, including but not limited to bribery, falsification of athletic profiles, and near-perfect SAT and ACT scores that were fraudulently obtained on behalf of other students, when in reality they were far from perfect. Make no mistake, this is not a case where parents were acting in the best interests of their children. This is a case where they flaunted their wealth, sparing no expense, to cheat the system so, so they could set their children up for success with the best education money could buy, literally. Some spent anywhere from 200000 to $6.5 million for guaranteed admission. Their actions were, without a doubt, insidious, selfish, and shameful. And the real victims in this case are the hardworking students who did everything they could to set themselves up for success in the college admissions process, but ended up being shut out because far less qualified students and their families simply bought their way in. What's also cause for concern is how this was even allowed to happen in the first place. Evidence we've obtained shows that trusted coaches and administrators manipulated the systems their universities had in place to accommodate students with fake athletic credentials, some of whom did not even play the sports they were recruited to play. It's a sham that strikes at the core of the college admissions process at universities across the country. And the alleged mastermind behind it, Rick Singer, offered a variety of cheating options as part of a widespread conspiracy to enrich himself, while also facilitating cheating on SAT and ACT exams, recruiting applicants onto competitive athletic teams in exchange for bribes, and concealing the nature and source of those bribes. There's no telling what their school of thought was while carrying out this conspiracy, but today's arrests should be a warning to others. You can't pay to play, you can't lie and cheat to get ahead, because you will get caught. This was a complex and demanding investigation, and it was charged accordingly. 
the use of the RICO statute signals the magnitude of the criminal enterprise and the seriousness of the crimes. I would like to personally recognize the investigators and prosecutors who pursued this case. However, our work is not done. Our investigation continues, and we will continue to find and stop those who aren't playing by the rules, because as you can see in this case, the impact on everyday people is real, has consequences, and broad-ranging effect. My sincerest appreciation for the tremendous work done by the United States Attorney and his team, as well as my thanks to Special Agent in Charge Christina O'Connell and her folks at the IRS Criminal Investigation for their continued partnership and support. This was truly a team effort. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you all for being here. I'd like to thank U.S. Attorney Andrew Lelling and FBI Special Agent in Charge Joseph Bonavolanta for the opportunity to address you here today. Again, my name is Christina O'Connell. I'm the Special Agent in Charge of the IRS Criminal Division of the Boston Field Office. This morning, Special Agents from IRS Criminal Investigation, alongside the FBI, arrested dozens of individuals for their role in a nationwide scheme to exchange bribes for college admissions. At the center of the sweeping financial crime is William Rick Singer. Singer and the others arrested today conspired to not only make and receive bribes, but to also funnel those bribe payments through a bogus charity founded by Singer. Utilizing this charitable business facade, Singer was able to conceal the true source and nature of the bribe payments. Then, to further the false legitimacy, Singer advised parents making the bribes that they could deduct the illicit payments as charitable donations on their own individual income tax returns. Overall, IRS criminal investigation and the FBI traced over $25 million in bribes laundered through this alleged charity founded by Singer. Overall, our investigators also revealed that the true objective of those involved was not charity at all, but greed. IRS criminal investigation will continue to collaborate with our law enforcement partners in the United States Attorney's Office on these complex financial investigations to ensure that the honest American taxpayers receive the message that IRS criminal investigation will never let financial corruption and greed trump hard work and honest effort. Thank you. Questions? Well, it's a, it's a, it appears to be a, a conspiracy nationwide in scope. There are several connections to the Boston area. So fake test scores, for example, were submitted to Boston College, Boston University, and Northeastern. Uh, two of the defendants live in this state. Uh, a lot of the conspiratorial activity, phone calls, meetings, uh, did happen here. Uh, and we, frankly, have the resources and the sophistication to take down a case of this magnitude. We don't know the total number. Um, as Special Agent in Charge Bonavolanta mentioned, this is still ongoing. So the 33 parents who we have charged, their children were able to get in somewhere. There are more than that, but I'm not prepared to give you a total. Is there anything that's going to happen to those students? I'm sorry? Is there anything that's going to happen to those students who got in fraudulently? Well, there are two aspects to that question, right? There is what is the reaction of the schools they go to? We leave that to the schools. That's not my bailiwick. As to charges against them, uh, we're still considering that. It's not an accident that there are no students charged in these charging documents. Uh, the parents, the other defendants, are clearly the prime movers of this fraud. It remains to be seen whether we charge any of the students. How what, degree degree were students what degree did the students graduate? You know, any percentage of how many students that actually got in fraudulently went on to graduate? I don't know the answer to that question. How active were the students? Parents very popular? Um, I'm sorry? Well, there are essentially, I, I'll speak more broadly, there were essentially two kinds of fraud that uh, Singer was selling. One was to cheat on the SAT or ACT, and the other was to use his connections with Division I coaches and use bribes to get these parents' kids into school with fake athletic credentials. 
Some parents took advantage of one. I think Ms. Huffman, for example, took advantage of one of these, which was the SAT cheating scam. Some took advantage of the other, and some took advantage of both. There's no pattern in that way. Any understanding of why she didn't report that to child support agencies before? Uh, I can't comment on that. Can you explain a little bit more about how you guys uncovered this case? Uh, I, I think what I can say is that our first lead in this case came during interviews with a target of an entirely separate investigation who gave us a tip that this activity might be going on. You know, it's funny, how did Rich Kinder get the details? How did he hold up all these details? Well, uh, I think he began in this college counseling business years and years ago and built up his connections over time. I think beyond that, I can't really comment. As you can tell from the charging documents, the, the uh, recruitment part of the scam depended on the personal relationships he had established with Division I coaches at a variety of elite schools. It says that the students are, are minimally involved in the, the exam cheating, but for a lot of these things, in terms of like getting the designation of clearing the tables, how, how, how involved were the students? How much did they know what was going on? That varied tremendously. And so, for example, when you look at the complaint affidavit, which I realize is quite long, you will see instances where it's important to parents that their child not know that this had occurred. And in that kind of instance, the student would actually go and take the exam, and someone working for Singer would come in afterward, correct enough of the answers, submit the exam. In some instances, however, the child did know. And in fact, there's an instance in the complaint affidavit where a particular defendant and his daughter are on a conference call with Singer to discuss the scam. So there was a, there was a pretty wide range of how parents tried to play this. And Singer, I think, attempted to accommodate whatever the parents wanted to do. It was both. So uh, there is at least, there is one coach who did not take any of the money for himself. The other coaches all took some money for themselves. Some took all of it for themselves, but most, it appears, gave some portion to the school's program and took some for their own use. Was this case tied to the, you mentioned another case that um, gave you a lead. Was this the Jerome Allen? No, it was not. You said um, that D.C., Northeastern, D.U. Uh, were somehow victims of uh, this admissions fraud. Can you elaborate on that? Well, they all received test scores that were artificially inflated through the cheating uh, scandal. Uh, in one instance, as you'll see in the complaint, it appears that one of the defendants uh, entered a quid pro quo with Singer, where Singer would help that defendant's student commit fraud, and in exchange, the parent would help one of Singer's other clients with admission to Northeastern University. I know it's a little confusing, but you'll see that uh, in the complaint. And there's no evidence that the schools knew anything about this? I mean, they just believed what he was doing? I think that's an important distinction to draw. It appears that the schools are not involved. Um, in, it appears that in all of these instances, with the exception of one USC administrator who we have charged, University of Southern California administrator we have charged. Um, the coaches were allotted slots for athletic recruitment. The coaches worked with Singer, meaning they accepted bribes. Singer gave the coaches sufficiently impressive fake athletic credentials. The coaches used those athletic profiles to convince everyone else internally that this was a good recruit for the team the person was hot, the person was admitted and the coach pocketed a bribe. Can you talk about some of the punishment, the level of punishment for each of those students? It's a little premature for that. I mean the statutes that we charge people under all have very high statutory maximums, but the actual sentence that someone might face uh, we, don't, we just don't know that yet. It's, it's very premature for that. Some of these bribes are, 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 su are substantial. You know, bribes between, as I said, usually between $250,000 and $400,000. Actually, I should say donations to Singer from which he made these bribes of college coaches. So it's a little premature to say what ranges of sentencing uh, they might be in. Well, I mean, I think, as, as you guys know, and as you can see in the complaint affidavit, we do occasionally flip targets and they wind up cooperating, but I can't comment on whether any of these people will. I will say that the investigation 
remains active. These are not the only parents involved. We suspect these probably aren't the only coaches involved. And so we will be moving ahead to look for uh, additional targets. Did Singer ever work for any one of these colleges before? I'm sorry? Did Singer ever work for one of these major universities before? Meaning was he an, employ an employee of any of these universities? Sitting here now, I do not know the answer to that. I'm sorry. Any criminal history points? Uh, I'm not going to comment on that. He said that he's planning on um, pleading guilty today. What has been the conversation? What's led up to that? Obviously, he didn't just hear about these charges this morning. Um, can you shed any light on that? I can't shed a lot of light on that because most of that is confidential. I can state the obvious, which is that um, we identified Singer some time ago, uh, and he has decided under a plea agreement to plead guilty to racketeering, among other charges. You knew that already, but that's really all I can tell you. Um, offhand, I don't remember what the provisions of the plea agreement will say about sentencing, but the plea agreement should ultimately be a public document, and you will be able to see that yourself. It will be docketed. Um, you mentioned that it appears that the schools are not involved, um, with the exception of that one administrator. Um, are the schools under investigation, or is there Right now, the schools themselves are not targets of this investigation. Um, as you can see from the charges we brought, the investigation was very broad. We've charged a lot of people throughout the investigation and our investigation of each of these targets. We have not seen the schools as co-conspirators with this activity. Thank you. How long has this investigation been underway since that first lead you got? I think it's been under investigation a little over a year. Am I right about that? Yep. A little over a year. What would happen when a student who purportedly played these sports gets to the student with big programs, Division I programs, and they don't play the sport? It varied. Some simply never showed up for the athletics. Some uh, pretended an injury. And I think some played briefly and then quit. Where are the defendants this criminal case? Can you tell us more about that? Uh, beyond what's in the uh, complaint affidavit, I cannot tell you more about that. And are, the, are any students still currently uh, enrolled? Uh, Children of these parents that you charged, or we're talking about uh, past. Uh... No, as you as you'll see from the charging documents, most of this activity is fairly current. Um, so I assume I can't tell you directly that the vast majority of the students admitted under false pretenses are are in these schools, and are enrolled and are active students. Uh, I don't know the answer to that. I can tell you that. Based on what I've seen in the charging documents, I don't think that's the case. I think they got admission, but I don't think they got separate athletic scholarships. What Singer was good at doing was calibrating the fake credentials to appear realistic and not so impressive as to invite suspicion or additional scrutiny. Did he have any legitimate clients, or were they, was it just entirely executed? I don't know the answer to that. Uh, one, de well, one defendant is in Hawaii, and so it's a time difference. Question, there are rules governing uh, at what times of day federal agents can make arrests, so you can't show up at 2 o'clock in the morning and arrest somebody. Um, and so that's what, that's what accounts for that. Uh, he was just a really smart guy. So if I understand your question correctly, he did not have inside information about the correct answers. He was just smart enough to get a near-perfect score on demand or to calibrate the score. So Singer would discuss with his clients what kind of score they're looking for. So if your daughter took the SAT on her own the first time and got a particular score, retaking the exam, if her score goes up too much, that would invite scrutiny. And so Singer would discuss with parents what kind of score was impressive, but not too impressive, and then would instruct Riddell to attempt to get that score. And he was just good enough to do it. What did Riddell do? Um, I'm not sure how much of that is public, so I'm going to err on the side of not answering that. I think in the charging document for Riddell, which is now public, you will find whatever I'm allowed to say 
uh, on that point, but I don't remember it standing here. How, how do they actually change the SAT and ACT scores? Like, what do they actually do? Well, Riddell would either take the exam in place of the student or would correct answers after the student handed in, and that would be submitted to the SAT. To Uh, I can't comment on that. Were there two, were there two pretty prominent actresses that you mentioned? Is it safe to say that they were among those who were arrested without incident today? Yes. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you.